This is Patricia Sanford, Director of the Maryland Archaeological Conservation Lab, and I would like to welcome you to Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum's Site Tour Saturday. Today and for the following two weeks, we are going to explore the Smith St. Leonard site, located here on the park. Staff at the park, as well as many members of the public, have been excavating this site for the last 18 years. Ed Cheney, the project's lead archaeologist, will guide us on this journey. Centuries before Jefferson Patterson Park came into existence, this property was a plantation known as St. Leonard. By the early 1660s, it was acquired by Richard Smith. He was a lawyer, the first person to hold the newly created position of Maryland's Attorney General. He built a house right over here, which is where the Mac Lab is today. We don't know much about what that house looked like, but given Smith's wealth and political connections, it was no doubt a fine house for its time. Richard died in 1689, and his son Richard Jr. inherited the plantation. He decided to build a new house down here at a site that we call King's Reach. This was the first site excavated by archaeologists here in the 1980s, and it's something that visitors to the park can now visit. In addition, it'll be the subject of future Site Tour Saturday videos. When archaeologists investigated King's Reach, they found a simple, even crude structure framed on wood posts stuck in the ground. This was surprising given the Smith's family's wealth, but there may be a good reason for it. Around the time that Richard Jr. inherited his plantation, there was a revolution in Maryland that overthrew the ruling Calvert family. He was a loyalist and even led a company of Calvert County men in defending the government down in St. Mary's. But Smith was on the losing side and was arrested for his effort and was only released after his wife appealed to the king. Given his uncertain future, it's not surprising that he decided not to invest too much money in his new house. If you're gonna to have to get out of town suddenly, you can take some of your possessions, but not your house. As for the Smith house here in St. Leonard, we think it was abandoned after John died in 1754. We're fortunate to have a map of the property that was drawn a few years later in 1770. The map shows the location of the house and indicates it was in ruins. We find very few artifacts on the site that date to after 1754, and that, along with the map, strongly indicates that the site was abandoned when John died. The map also tells us that bricks were used to spell out the number 1711 on the side wall of the house. This almost certainly indicates the construction date for Richard Smith Jr.'s dwelling. As an interesting side note, Walter may have sometimes brought his young daughter Margaret with him on his visits to St. Leonard. Margaret later went on to marry Zachary Taylor and became a presidential first lady. Of course, we know the Smiths built their wonderful plantation at St. Leonard on the backs of enslaved Africans. We don't know much about these unfortunate people, but we know that upwards of 44 labored here at any one time. They had names like Nanny, Robin, and Oki and were assigned a monetary value based on the quality of the work that they could perform. Beyond that, historical documents tell us little. But in the next video, we'll see what archaeology has told us about the lives of the Africans and the English who lived here at Smith St. Lake. 